The reviews for Martin Scorsese's The Irishman are in, and they're about as fantastic as reviews can get. Based on Charles Brand's 2004 book I Heard You Paint Houses, The Irishman stars Robert De Niro as former mafioso and alleged hitman Frank the Irishman Sheeran, who details the dirty deeds he did while working for the Buffalino crime family. And there's particular focus on his involvement in the disappearance and purported murder of International Brotherhood of Teamsters leader Jimmy Hoffa, played by Al Pacino. The Irishman had its world premiere at the 57th New York Film Festival on September 27th, 2019, when critics fell head over heels for it. As of September 30th, The Irishman stands at a flawless 100% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Writing for IndieWire, Eric Cohn said of the legendary director's latest, It takes less than five minutes to establish The Irishman in Martin Scorsese's unmistakable voice. The mood is at once taut and funny. The essence of Scorsese's ability to humanize the mob as prickly macho men, just a few notes shy of lovable. In that fundamental disconnect between endearing people and the psychotic world they represent, the movie presents a fascinating on-ramp to America's obsession with organized crime. Cohn added that The Irishman is bursting with Scorsese's trademark style and proves that the director is, quote, more alive than ever. At the movie Minute, Joanna Langfield wrote, Scorsese's mob epic demands and commands. Confident enough to play with traditional storytelling as well as cutting-edge technology, this is thrilling work from artists at their prime. It's a marvel to watch the piece as a whole, with its shifting tones, laugh-out-loud funny breaks, and its sneaky very human heartbeat. J. Don Burnham at Splash Report says that there's more to The Irishman than meets the eye, writing, As with everything Scorsese touches, The Irishman is plenty more than just a criminal's biography. Like many of his other films, it is a reflection on human nature, on whether and how greed, loyalty, betrayal, and regret drive a life. It is also, more fundamentally, an aging director's look back with nostalgia at his own work, at forgotten episodes in American history, and about the meaning not just of life but of humanity itself. Slash Films Chris Evangelista called The Irishman a funny, melancholy masterpiece in his review, writing, This is not good, fellas. This is not Casino. This is Scorsese at his most reflective crafting a masterwork that finds a filmmaker reflecting on everything he's done and what it's all amounted to. The results are breathtaking, and one of Martin Scorsese's very best films. The stellar cast of The Irishman received high praise from critics, the vast majority of whom felt each star turned in career-best performances. Vulture critic David Edelstein was impressed by the major players in The Irishman, but was completely floored by Joe Pesci as Russell Buffalino. Edelstein wrote in his review, I heard all sorts of huzzah about Pacino, and he is wonderful, but it's Pesci who thrilled me to the core. He likes to talk, don't he? Matt Zoller Sites of RogerEbert.com wrote that The Irishman solidifies De Niro as, quote, one of the great scene-stealing straight men in film history, while Vogue's Taylor Antrim said that Pacino is just a scenery chewing riot as Hoffa. AV Club's A.A. A. Dowd commended both Scorsese's direction and De Niro's enduring acting chops in writing that the filmmaker, quote, brings out a subtle agony from De Niro one might have assumed the actor could no longer summon. What do you want to know? You want to know if I did it or not? <laughs> Stephanie Zaharik at Time Magazine felt similarly, writing, De Niro gives his best performance in years. With zero mugging or scowling, his Frank is a man of action who's so busy doing bad stuff, he barely has time to think. Some may be wary of The Irishman after hearing that it clocks in at a staggering 209 minutes, but most critics have promised that the hefty runtime is part of what makes the film so special. As The New Yorker's Richard Brody wrote, it runs a minute shy of three and a half hours, and I wouldn't wish it any shorter. Brody certainly wasn't the only one who felt this way about The Irishman's runtime. At IV Club, A.A. Dowd said, This is a remarkably brisk three and a half hours. Scorsese, at a ripe 76, still directs with the energy of a hungry young filmmaker, his command of montage yanking the audience forward from scene to scene. Over at Vox, Alyssa Wilkinson argued that, quote, The near bagginess of the film is part of its initial charm. She continued, The Irishman's long arc, which involves the use of largely unobtrusive de-aging technology, means the film follows Franks and his associates long past when the movie usually ends ends, with triumph or failure. The film instead takes a distinct turn away from ratatat plotting and revenge toward a frankly stunning, contemplative movement. Speaking of the digital de-aging in The Irishman, used to make De Niro, Pesci, and Pacino look decades younger, many critics agree that while it can briefly take viewers out of the film, the technology only adds to the story. Stephanie Zakharik wrote, The de-aging is distracting at first. The actor's eyes look real, but their skin is just a tad rubbery and flat. Now and then I have to stave off a PTSD flashback to Robert Zemeckis' Polar Express, but the special effects are hardly a deal-breaker, and in the end, they probably
actually add to the movie's mythological vibe. Mike Ryan at Top Rocks said that the de-aging isn't perfect, but it's worth it, writing, This is a small price to pay to get all these actors together again to tell this story. Audiences can decide for themselves how they feel about The Irishman when the film opens in a limited capacity on November 1st, then drops on Netflix on November 27th. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.